What's up everybody, Chris from Full Steam Designs. So recently I've been looking for some CNC software that just offered a little more. Um, and I started looking into CarveCo. Now you may not be familiar with them, but maybe you've heard of ArtCam and essentially that's what CarveCo is. Uh, now CarveCo is software that's designed for major CNC manufacturers and it comes with a price tag that matches that. But recently they started offering a couple other tiers, uh, Maker and Maker Plus. And those offer stuff for everybody from hobbyist levels to people that are professionals and just looking to up their game a little bit. So today we're gonna run through kind of a tutorial for Maker. Um, and I don't just want you guys to think of it as a tutorial, you know, especially if you don't have the program. Uh, what I want this to do is show you some different stuff that you can do. Uh, there is a lot of stuff that I struggled to do with my other software and this does it easily. So we're kind of just going to run through some of the basics of that today. Now if you are interested in checking this out, I'm going to put an affiliate link in the description down below. Make sure you check that out. Uh, and not only is that going to help the channel out a little bit, but it's going to save you guys some cash on the program too. So without further ado, let's roll that intro and jump into our tutorial. All right, when you first open Maker, you're gonna see this screen here and you'll be able to click on your recent models if you'd like. Uh, you'll also have a notification at the top if there's an update that you need to do. Uh, you can open a model or we can go here and start a new model. And you have this box for your dimensions. Now the dimensions are unlimited. There's no restriction on any of their programs. Uh, you can do any size that you'd like to do. For this demonstration, I'm just gonna do 24 by 24. You can change your resolution if you'd like, select your units, I'm going to leave it in inches, and you can also select where you would like your zero position to be. I'm going to do this lower left hand corner. Now when you first open it up, you're going to be in the 3D view, you have that and the 2D view. Uh, just because you're working in the 3D view doesn't mean you're necessarily doing 3D work. Uh, this is the screen that I like to work in, and pretty much all of your buttons work between the two. It's just whatever you prefer. So we're going to start by making just a couple circles. We'll click the circle tool and you notice when I come to the middle, it kind of lets me know that I'm in the middle like that. So I can click and drag. And if I know what size I want, I just come over here and can put in either the diameter or if I prefer, you can do radius. Click create and we're going to draw another circle in the center of that. And we'll make this one 20. And now I'd like to add some text, so we'll click on this text tool. And I actually didn't mean to do this. Right now it's going to start typing on this curve, uh, which I didn't mean to do, and I'm gonna, gonna deselect that, but this gives me a good opportunity to show you just how easy it is to do curve text with this program. And to get off of that, I'm just going to click cancel here next to select curve. And then it just gives me some regular text. Now, normally I would go ahead and just hit F9 here, and that would center whatever I have selected in my model. Uh, but that is also a function of the screen recorder that I'm using to make this video. So they're kind of conflicting right now and giving me some problems. Uh, but just make sure you remember that F9 will center whatever you have selected. That is a really helpful function key. All right, now I want to add a couple rectangles, which are going to serve as like connection pieces above and below. And I just draw it to whatever size I want, click Create, and I can just make sure it's selected, and I can use the arrow keys to move it around to wherever I'd like it to be maybe something like that. Now I want to copy that. I'll just hit control C and then control V. And the nice thing about this is when it pastes it, it pastes right on top of the old one. I really like that. Uh, so now I can move that down to roughly where I'd like it. And you see it kind of snaps. It'll snap to those points that are there. But again, you can use your up and down arrows if you prefer doing that. All right, now I wanna add one more feature. We're gonna add a big M. Oop, and you can see I had that box selected. So it's trying to, to snap to that box. But I'm gonna click cancel here and then it'll just put it 
down here. We need to make this one a lot bigger. Let's try 14. All right, and that looks pretty good, so click Create. And now we kind of need to simplify this a little bit. You'll, you'll notice that it's looking a little crazy probably because everything's just laying on top of itself. So what we're going to do is use this trim tool here and I'll click that and I want to get rid of like these lines in the M that run through where I wrote maker. But you'll notice that the scissors aren't opening. And that's because this M here is a closed vector. So what I can do is click ungroup vectors by going there and you'll see that it's purple and that means that it's grouped. When you click ungroup, it'll change to pink. And you can also use control U or control G. Control G will group it. You see it changed purple. Control U will ungroup it. And also you have a button here that you could click. Uh, there's a lot of ways to do the same thing. It's just whatever you feel most comfortable with. So now we've got it ungrouped. We can go back to our scissors. And now you see that those scissors open and see they're trimming to this line here. So it's not trimming to like the letters because this uh, maker is still a closed group. So we'll trim all those pieces. And now we need to simplify the rest. Again, we could come and, and clip everything, but that kind of takes a little bit of time to do. So what I like to do to make this a little bit faster is fill these areas in with color. I can select this outside and the inside part of this M and go up to bitmap and flood fill vectors. And it's just gonna use whatever color I have here selected as my primary color, which I have black selected. So flood fill vector. And you notice nothing happened. And all we need to do is we're on the material screen we need to switch over to this bitmap screen. And now you can see that that's filled in. So we can do this here too. You can either click one piece, hold shift and click another piece, or you can come in from the right side, click and drag over whatever you're looking to select and it'll select everything that you touch. So now again, we're gonna say flood fill vectors and we'll do the same thing down on the bottom part of the M here. Now I wanna do this circle. We can do these two rectangles. And then we can click the text and say flood fill vectors. And now you see that's filled everything in in black. So this is how I would like it to be cut out. Now all we need to do is just trace that. So if I select everything and I click this button here, bitmap to vector, and normally what you would be doing here is you would import some sort of picture and you could trace it out to create your own vector from you know an image you found on the internet or whatever. Um, you can also import an SVG if you, if you would prefer to use those. Personally, I know that's something that I like because I do have a lot of different SVGs already. So we don't really need to mess with any of these options. Um, you can like reduce the colors in an image just to kind of simplify it. Uh, but since everything is black here, we don't really need to worry about that. Now what I do want to do is create a new vector layer here. So I'm just going to hit this little plus. We can name it if we'd like. I'm just gonna leave it vector layer one. And then we're just gonna click create vectors. Now I can close this window. I can come over here to this light bulb on our other layer. I'll turn that off. And now if I turn that down, you'll see all we're doing is cutting out these traced areas here. So all I'm, all I'm doing with this is just turning down the color. And again, this is kind of just showing you a couple ways to get to the same end here. You may be comfortable doing it the way that I did where I filled in the colors and then created a new vector, 
or it may be easier for you just to use the clip tool and you can come in and trim everything. It's really about whatever you're more comfortable with. I think this is a little bit faster though. So now we have our vector created and we're gonna make a toolpath. So we'll come over here to toolpaths and we're just doing a 2D toolpath. So I'm gonna click on this one here, create profile toolpath. And you're gonna get all these options that pop up. And I'll be honest with you, this looks a little intimidating and maybe a little confusing, but it's really pretty simple. Um, you just need to make sense of it. The first thing we're gonna do is come all the way down to the bottom and we're gonna define our material. And all you have to do is put in your thickness here. Let's say we're using a half inch piece of plywood. You can select the top or the bottom to be your zero point. Uh, I think probably most people are working off the top. That's what I always do. So we'll select top. If you wanted to, you could offset that. Uh, that's not something that we need to worry about here. So we'll just click OK. And now you'll see how that changed color. So if I look at this from the side, that's actually that piece of material there with nothing cut out of it yet. So now we've got some other options right above it here. Click this little arrow and you've got safe Z. This is your retract height. I set mine pretty low because I run some low clamps. Honestly, for a project like this, I'd probably use pin nails. So you could really set it even lower if you want, but 0.1 is what I feel comfortable with. This home position over here is actually where your spindle is going to go to after the job is completed. So when everything is done, the spindle will raise up to 0.6247 inches and then it's going to go all the way back to zero in the Y position, and it's gonna stay at 26 in the X position. So if you're cutting around here and it finishes here, it's gonna come back to about here on your waste board. So that's gonna get out of the way of your material so you can remove it. Uh, I know most of you guys are probably used to it just either shooting all the way back or maybe going to your home position, zero, zero. So it's kind of nice now that we have the option to set where it's going to go. All right, now we can scroll up and we're gonna click here to select what tool we're gonna use. And I'm gonna keep this pretty simple. We'll just click a 1 8 end mill, click select. Now, if you click this drop down here, you've got that tool loaded in and it gives you options if you would like to change your feeds and speeds. Uh, step down, you know, all the normal stuff. Uh, it does have a tool number. Now, tool numbers are important. It doesn't really matter what the tool numbers are, but if you were using two different tools on one job and you wanted to send this to something like Carbide Motion, uh, and maybe you had a bit setter, or like me, you use the depth stop collars, you could use two different tool numbers. The program will stop after it's run the first tool, It'll raise up, allow you to change your tool out. If you have the bit setter, it'll go to the bit setter. If not, uh, you can just start running that next tool. But you just wanna make sure that you're using two different numbers. If you call two different tools the same number, it's gonna confuse it and it probably won't raise up and allow you to change it like that. All right, you'll see we can add lead ins, lead outs, ramping, and you also have an option for bridges and bridges are tabs. Uh, they'll keep your material from moving around while it's being cut. And you can do these automatically, or you can click manual and then go around and double click and it'll add them in. But I, I like doing it auto. And I, normally I'll just put two of them in. So for length, I put like 0.2, uh, thickness 0.1, change this to 2D and just click add and you'll see now that it's added all of those tabs in. Now the last thing to do is just change our cutting parameters. So you can have a start depth if you'd like. Uh, for this, it's going to be zero, which is going to be the top of our material. And then finish will be 0.5 since it's a half inch thick. And now all we need to do is click calculate now. And I'm gonna close this window here. If we zoom in, you'll see these red lines here and that's our actual tool path. So like if you look where we've got those tabs that we added in on that last tool path, it comes in, gets to that tab, raises up, moves over, comes back down and continues cutting.
This also will show you like how many passes that it's making. So one, two, three, four, five. That's because it's a half inch and we have each pass set at 0.1. All right, now one of my favorite things is we can click on toolpath. So now here is our toolpath that we just generated. If I right click on this, you can either click simulate toolpath or simulation control bar. So let's click simulation control bar. And now you get this little thing up here with a play button. So if we click that, you'll see how it actually cuts everything out. It's actually going and making five passes at each area. It's running very fast. The simulation is running very fast, that is. All right, and that's everything. We can look at it from the front. You'll see where it leaves areas for where those tabs are, but that's cutting out exactly what we want. So now all we need to do is save that. Now, something I wanna say here, we didn't actually save this model yet. You would save the model you're creating up here, or you can click Control S. And you wanna make sure you do that. Uh, you know, anything can happen with your computer, it can crash or something. Uh, Windows can be a little crazy sometimes and start trying to do updates on you. So it's important to save there, but it's also important to realize that if you save this toolpath here and don't save that, you won't, go, you won't be able to go back and edit it. So now we'll click Save Toolpaths. And we only have one in here because we only use the one tool. If you use multiple tools, you would have multiple ones selected here. But we've just got that one toolpath. So for me, it's already got uh, the correct post processor selected. And there are a million options. You can pretty much use this on any software, but I'm gonna use this Carbide 3D, uh, Shapoko Inch, because I have Carbide Motion set to run in inches. You can see that it exports it as a .nc, and then we can put a file name in. I'm just gonna call it Maker, and all we do is click Save. Now, it doesn't close this window or anything, but don't be afraid that it didn't save. Uh, if you are concerned, just click Save again, and you'll get this error message, you know, verifying that you want to overwrite that file. Um, so that will tell you that it's saved. We can just click no. And then we can just close out of this. So now if you were going to cut this out, you would just load up Carbide Motion, initialize your machine, load that program, and you'd be ready to go. All right, I hope you guys got something from that. You know, we barely grazed the surface. There is so much stuff you can do. And keep in mind, we were just using Maker. If you step up to Maker Plus, you can do even more. So even with Maker, you can do 3D work and they have a huge free collection of 3D reliefs. But if that's not enough for you, you can go on the internet, download an STL, it'll import right into the program and you'll be able to work with that. You may have noticed on the opening screen that I had something that said Jumanji. I've always wanted to make a wooden Jumanji board and I was able to find an STL for that. Uh, downloaded it, opened it up, it worked great. Now I'm actually gonna be able to make that and that was something I could never do with my software that I was using before. All right, thanks for checking the video out. Big thank you to these guys here for supporting me on Patreon, really appreciate it. I'll put a link down in the description if you wanna check me out on there and I'll see you guys over on this next video. Everybody is a lot